Who wants to get an Elytra and Shulker boxes today? Anybody? Everybody? Okay, let's go. We're starting out this episode where we left the last one, but because I, I literally just a few hours ago finished, finished recording the last one. And we now need to actually, before we go it, deeper into the end, we need to make our way back. We need to head back to base because we actually, we need to get, oh, I hate it when the shield does that. We need to get prepared for our trip here because we're, we're gonna need some things to make this end trip, this end raid, very profitable and along the way let's talk about why do we want to go to the end what kind of awesome things we're going to get there let's jump in now as far as going to the end we need a few things okay we're going to bring a couple stacks of arrows we're going to bring a stack of logs so we can make shulker boxes when we kill shulkers and get shulker shells we're going to bring a couple stacks of food some ender pearls with us and i'm going to keep all my tools on me i, I don't i don't plan on falling in the void and dying Although if you want to play it safe, really the only tools that you're going to need to have is going to be your silk touch pickaxe. Um, you'll want to carry a sword with you and your bow. And that's, that's about it. You can get rid of the other tools and equipment you have if you want to. And we also need, yeah, we're, we're going to need, we're going to need something to make some rockets because with the elytra, we're going to be able to fly. And for that, we need gunpowder and paper. Now the sugar cane, which makes paper, we already had that because we made a farm for that earlier. The gunpowder though, I was totally out of. And there's two ways to get gunpowder. One way is killing creepers. The other way is killing ghasts. And I already killed creepers during the nighttime hours. So I don't really have anything else to do there because it's daytime in overworld. So instead we came over to the nether to kill. Oh, where? Ah! He's going to kill me. Oh, he's right. He's literally right above my head. So we've come over here to kill gas to get gunpowder instead. And I want to get about a stack, I think. Because a stack of gunpowder with a stack of paper will make three stacks of rockets. And I think that'll be enough for our end trip. It'll it'll last us for quite a while if you're efficient with your rockets. So I'm going to keep hunting here. And then I'll see you guys on the other side when we're at the portal waiting to go. Okay, so paper and gunpowder has been, where'd my paper go? Paper and gunpowder have been acquired. Um, I'm just gonna go ahead and make it into the rockets now. I think would be the best thing to do. So we'll go ahead and craft our rockets. We'll end up getting three stacks out of it. And if you're pretty good with your firework rockets, this should be more than enough. Or if you don't really plan on doing a whole lot of end rating, this should also be more than enough. And at this point, for the most part, we have everything that we're going to need. Um, again, I'm going to kind of just take some things out of my inventory. I definitely don't need. I have no use for torches, so we'll take those out. Um, I think everything else in here is good. I really don't. Nah, we'll bring a bucket with us, I guess, just in case uh, we get attacked by Enderman while we have an Elytra on. Because once you take off your armor and you have just the Elytra, uh, you're, you're going to be in a tough spot. Oh, you know what else we should do? We, we need to be able to enchant our Elytra once we're out there. I just thought about that. Um, so we need to bring a mending book and an unbreaking three book with us. So let me find some books and some emeralds. Okay, so we're ready there. We have an anvil so we can combine it. We have unbreaking three. We have mending. This is going to be critical to bring because what we don't want is we don't want our first elytra to potentially break while we're flying around. And then lastly, I'm just going to bring several stacks of cobblestone so we can do any kind of bridging we may need to do when we're out there. And you'll see maybe if we do, you'll see what that's going to entail. And we got our shield. I think I think we're good to go. Uh, we're going to get one more thing while we're in the end. Um, and if you have it already, I would just grab it now. And that is Ender Pearls. Okay, now once you're fully supplied up and ready to go, you need to come to the end gateway that you opened in the end after killing the Ender Dragon. Now, this one's actually in a very, very convenient position. Some of them are not. Some of them, a lot of them, maybe almost all of them, will be directly above the void, meaning that if you go up there, you make one mistake, you fall down, you die, you lose all of your stuff. In our case, we don't have to worry about that. We do still need to kind of staircase up to it so we can actually get to it. But um, in, in this particular case, we don't have to necessarily worry about falling down into the void. So we're just going to work our way up. Build yourself a little platform around here so you don't fall down, especially if it's over top of the void. 
And then I always recommend kind of blocking off the sides too, so you don't fall down. And we'll probably even make it a little bit higher. That way, uh, when we throw our ender pearl through here, and it's, ow. Also, I, I, I recommend not to aggro those guys, because if you don't have knockback resistance, then they're probably going to throw you into the void as well. But anyways, I was going to say, make this a little bit taller. That way, when you throw your ender pearl in, you don't have a risk of misthrowing it and ending up in the void as well. Now, when it comes to actually raiding the end and finding end cities, I'm going to show you three different ways to do it. Method number one is going to be my first method, and that's doing it the old fashioned way of just going in, walking around until you find an end city. I always like to find my first end city this way. And in we go. Hold down the shift. Oh, gosh, where am I? Hold down the shift button when you go through or the crouch button because sometimes this gateway will also be on a small island like some of those out there and literally a single step forward can kill you. Um, in this case, we're going to mark this a little bit better. Oh, hello. And look, wow. Well, I said we were going to find our first in city the good old fashioned way. <laughs> we already did. We ended up right by one. Really, the best thing to do, though, is to turn your render distance up as high as you, you can and just take a look around in our case our render distance here is uh, 32 chunks which is pretty far so i'm not going to have that hard of a time finding one of these in cities now the harder time is actually getting over to this end city because all of these islands they're not connected um and it looks like we're gonna have to pillar out and pillaring over the void is very scary now, I recommend the whole time you hold down the crouch button, even if you're doing the block snapping method of facing forward and looking down, because sometimes, sometimes, especially if you're a noob like me, the block, it doesn't always snap. And then whenever I do this, I'm so deathly afraid right now. Like I am almost breaking both my pinky and a shift key, just trying to get out here. And once we get close enough, we can use this ender pearl to send this out there. I also highly recommend while doing this bridging method, you, you keep looking like mostly downwards because the last thing you want to do is to look at Enderman and then him punch you and knock you off. So just kind of like take it slow, be safe and make your way to the end city, especially, especially one like this one where it's got a boat. Now, once you're close enough and I'm, I'm way more than close enough, but I'm sorry, I'm playing it safe because I really don't want to fall in the void. Um, you can toss a pearl to get across like so. And wow, there's an end gateway, right, uh, end gateway right here as well, which is very nice. And now we can go raid this end city. Now, inside of your end cities, there's going to be loot that you're going to really want to have. The first thing we're going to see are shulkers, and they're going to give us shulker shells, of which we can make shulker boxes from. And there's always going to be two down here at the entrance and you can just simply run up to them and kill them pretty quickly. Just like so they're going to hit you with the shulker bullets and those shulker bullets, they're going to make you levitate. You don't want to levitate out here because if you go too high up in the air, you can fall down, go splat and die. So it's always good to tuck your head up under a block somewhere. That way, th that way death doesn't occur. And we're simply just going to go around and try to get a few shulker shells because really the first thing I want to get myself is a shulker box. And unfortunately, that didn't give me any shulker shells. Make sure you use a looting sword when you're doing this because the looting effect will give you more shells from the shulkers. And one of the first things you're going to hopefully find in here is an ender chest. And we haven't gone over the ender chest yet, but this is a good way to get it. We actually could have made one ourselves much sooner than this by just combining obsidian with an eye of ender. Uh, but in this case, we just waited to find one and an ender chest. This will give you access to the same inventory no matter where you open the chest. So I could have a chest here. I could put items in it and then I could leave the chest here or break it. Go over to the overworld at my main base, open it up and those same items are in it. It's kind of like your wire. It's a wireless chest. It, it's going to always have the items that you put in it in it and only you can access it. If somebody else looks in it, they'll see things that they've put in their own ender chest. They won't see things that you've put in your ender chest. Also, next, we're going to craft ourselves a shulker box. So let's get a crafting table out. Let's place it 
Uh, let's go ahead and get ourselves. Let's see. It takes two shulker shells to make a shulker box and we'll make three shulker boxes out of this. So we need to make three chests. One, two, three shulker boxes. One, two, three. And now the shulker box, we can place it down. We can place any items in it that we don't want to carry around with us. So, for example, um, I can put in all of those things. Um, I will probably put my extra rockets and my extra food directly in the ender chest. And any extra gear that I don't really feel like I need to carry around with me right now, I'm probably just going to put it in the ender chest too. So I don't need a shovel. I don't need an axe and I don't need two pickaxes. I'm going to put the fortune one away because I want to carry the silk touch with me and we'll keep the wood on us for now. Uh, we should be able to just throw the extra stack of arrows in here as well. And then we'll keep these other things on us too. We're going to have a couple of empty shulker boxes so we can put those in. And then this one that I've already put some gear in, I can break this one, put it in our ender chest as well. Make sure this is my silk touch pickaxe I have because now I can break this and now I can carry the ender chest and my ender chest can carry all my shulker boxes to make my inventory management a lot easier. And I'm just I'm going to take this crafting table with me, too, so I don't have to craft another one so we can make some more shulker boxes as we go. And eventually this is where you're going to want to make your way over to the boat. The boat is where the grand prize lies and that grand prize is the elytra now I, I don't have an ender pearl on me and unfortunately i have flame on my sword or fire aspect on my sword therefore whenever i hit an enderman they, they just teleport away so getting pearls even though there's tons of endermen to kill has actually been kind of hard but once i get close enough one of these shulkers they'll actually shoot me with their shulker bullet and then i'll just be able to float up and then land on the boat which shouldn't be that bad there we go and now i can scoop myself over here and underneath here that way i don't fall like a far distance and die there we go now i can run inside here there's going to be a shulker take him out and here it is on the item frame our first elytra of the world of which we'll place down an anvil we'll throw in the elytra we'll add on breaking three and we'll add mending now we have it on we have it equipped we don't have our armor on. I'm going to keep it with me on my hot bar. That way, if I get in a pinch where I think I'm taking too much damage, I can just swap over to it really quick because the Elytra, it does not have an armor value. See how when I switch it back and forth, I lose four armor and also the, the fact that I have protection on this gear as well. So it is a big deal to not wear your Elytra. You're going to take a lot more damage. You're not going to want to fight those Endermen. You're not going to want to get involved with too many shulkers. You have to be a little bit more careful. And now comes the fun part. We just need to go through and raid a whole bunch of end cities. But what's the best way to find a bunch of them without wasting a whole bunch of time? Well, one of the first methods and maybe one of the easier ones is to make a creative copy of your world, especially if you're on a realm or you're on a server, which is going to have a limited render distance and turn up your render distance all the way as high as you can. In my case, I can take my render distance all the way up to 96 chunks, which is pretty crazy, right? So now I can come out here and I can see multiple in cities just from flying around. So what I could do is I could simply come over to this in city right here. I could write down the coordinates that are in the top left hand corner of my screen and then plot myself a course from here. I can then go over to this end city, write down those coordinates, and then bounce over to that end city, write down those coordinates. And as many end cities as I feel like I want to raid, we can go through and continually do this, write down all the coordinates, and then head on over to the actual survival world and go through and raid them. Another thing you could do is find out what your seed number is and write that down, and then come over to chunkbase.com, click on apps, Scroll down, click on end city, put in your seed. Don't forget to select if you're playing on Bedrock Edition or Java Edition. And then you're going to have end cities load and it'll show you if you can see where I'm hovering over it right now towards the bottom. It'll tell me if it has a ship, which is this darker purple color or this gray color where it does not have a ship. Now, what I can do is I can figure out where my coordinates are in the world right now. Just kind of figure out which like in city I'm at currently. And then I can plot a course. Maybe I go from here 
to here, 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 here. And I just kind of follow a path and hit all the end cities I want to hit. Or if I want to get a lot of Elytra, I can start here and work my way down and through and go this way. So there's going to be a lot of different methods I can take. And I can really, at this point, efficiently hit as many end cities as possible. I personally like this method because while I think it's always fun to go find your first end city on your own, after that, it's all repetitive. And I would rather make much better use of my time by already knowing where all the end cities are. That way I can just bounce from one to the next, get all the things that I want to get, and then spend more of my time in game playing and getting back to building farms and builds and that sort of thing. So now that we have our Elytra, oh, and by the way, you do have these, um, these brewing stands here that do have potions in them. So if you want, if you want potions of healing, you can grab those. But now that we have our Elytra, we're able to fly. First, I, I wanna, can I get rid of this guy? Did he shoot that bullet at me? Let's go kill him real quick. You can break the bullets by like punching them, by the way. Oh gosh. Oh wow, look, you can activate your Elytra and go down. Has that always been like that? I don't think it's always been like that. Wow, okay, that's kind of cool. That must be a bug or something. And there's a shulker right here. And now really what you want to do is just clear the end city. That means to literally go through it and kill every shulker that is in the city to get all the shulker shells before you go to the next end city. Now I I've gone through and I've plotted a course through here. That's going to give me a lot of shulker shells and a few elytra along the way. And I'm going to follow that course on stream. So, I mean, this stream would have happened like days ago for you guys watching the video right now, but make sure you catch my live streams and all my live streams do end up in video form after. So if you wanna see the full adventure, I would head on over to the live stream playlist. That way you could catch all the fun and shenanigans that happen between me and stream chat. So I'm gonna go ahead and hop on now. Oh, but before I do, maybe I should show you how to fly real quick. That'd probably be good, right? Flying is actually really easy, especially when you're starting from a like higher up position. You just simply have to hit the jump button once you're already in the air. So I can jump once, I can jump again, and now I float. And if I click with the firework rocket in my hand, it shoots me off and I go flying. So now I can go through, I can kill all these shulker boxes that are around here, these shulkers that are around here. And now it's time for me to go and start my stream. So stream has begun. I am here live with the stream and I wanted to tell you guys, I wanted to let you guys know, give you the opportunity to give a little guess. What are we going to end up with through this end raid? How many shulker shells do you think we'll have? How many elytra do you think we'll have? How many like diamonds? Yeah, I think diamonds, those three diamonds, shulker shells and elytra. Let me know down in the comment section below right now. How many think I'm going to get? If you're in stream right now, let me know how many you think I'm going to get in stream. People, no cheating. Cheating is not allowed. Don't go into the video and, and ruin it for everybody. I'll attack you. And we're back from the end raid. I finished it up on stream. If you want to catch the whole thing, go catch the whole thing. It'll be linked down in the description below. I'll try to remember to put a tag up in the top right hand corner of the screen. And you can always just check the playlist. But drum roll for all of you people that have been wondering what kind of awesome, amazing things that we got. First of all, we got 13, 14 ender chests. So if you wanted to guess that you did, then there you go. Uh, but more importantly, here's all the stuff we got. So you ended up with a stack and a half of iron, two stacks plus six on gold ingots, a stack plus 19 of diamonds. And we got ourselves one, two, three, four stacks plus 14 of shulker shells. That is awesome because every full stack of shulker shells equals 32 shulker boxes. So with four full stacks right there, that's what 128 shulker boxes plus another seven. That's a lot of shulker boxes. A few emeralds. I grabbed some end rods to maybe use for builds later and a few other miscellaneous things. And then we obviously got a whole bunch of other loot too. And the end is a great place to go if you just want to get some good backup gear because you can go and either just use this outright, combine it together to make better pieces of armor than what's already here, or strip the enchantments off all together and start fresh. Whatever prefer, whatever way you prefer you can do uh and you have to get the diamond horse armor when you go in like that's a requirement uh we have five elytras i picked up a few a couple of uh, potions of health but i got tired of getting those and we got a lot of tools and uh swords and such through here too but maybe most importantly out of all this is we can now fly around our cave around our top base and we can now actually travel a lot faster than we have all the way up until this point 
now there's a caveat here we don't have a lot of rockets so we don't have a way to easily do a lot of this travel so we're gonna need to do something about that and i may have a farm that's gonna take care of this but that's gonna be for the next episode i appreciate everybody hanging out click that like button if you enjoyed the video click the subscribe button if you like the bedrock guide series and want to see maybe something new coming from me here pretty soon and i'll check you out next time bye